Hey guys, um, this week we're going to do um, a little bit of uh, maintenance, maintenance work. Uh, we've kind of gone over how to use compressors, um, some of the different techniques we use compressors. Uh, this week we're going to focus on entirely on when to use a compressor, what is the dis decision making process that I use when or not to use a compressor. And uh, I originally thought this... Uh, Hey guys, um, this week we're going to do um, a little bit of uh, maintenance work. Uh, we've kind of gone over how to use compressors, um, some of the different techniques we use compressors. Uh, this week we're going to focus on entirely on when to use a compressor, what is the dis decision making process that I use when or not to use a compressor. And uh, I originally thought this well, it's going to be a good one, pretty solid, might not be that interesting, but I kind of enjoyed it, so I hope you do too. The way I think, I, my mind kind of divides compressors up into two broad bands, one of those bands having a, a bit of a subcategory, but I usually think of compressors as either to work with dynamics, tame, smooth out, whatever you want to call it, dynamics within a track in some way. Uh, that would be... Uh, also inclusive of, of things like bringing something to the front of the track, making it sit in the track. So that's, that's one of the ways I think about compression, when to use it. And then the other way I make a decision about compression is using it as an effect. For example, adding attack to the snare or increasing the attack on a vocal or, or, or like I'm going to show you today, increasing the attack on, a, on an acoustic guitar. I think of compression as Here's my threshold, here's, here's my music levels. Now, when, when a music level goes above my threshold that I've set, let's say it goes above that threshold 10 dB, and, and I set my ratio at two, then for every 10 dB above threshold, it knocks it down to five. So, so instead of doing this, it goes half, and it goes like this. So we've lowered our overall level 5 dB, so now you take the gain knob and you crank that up 5 dB, and so what you've done in effect is you've moved the little troughs, like think of it as mountains, we've got about five metaphors going here, bear with me, think of it as mountains and valleys, you've now moved the valley up. The mountain stays where it is because of the gain control, you put that peak where it originally was with the gain control, and then the, the, the valley comes up. That's how we get things to, to sound like they're a little more up front, a little more in our face. Now don't go compressing every track, because if you do that, nothing's going to stick out. You're just going to, then you're going to start going, God, I can't, I can't separate the, uh, I can't hear this track over this track over this. Yeah, you killed all the dynamics, so your ear can't find it. So, so don't overuse compression. I, I, like I've said a hundred thousand times, I'm not a huge, huge fan of, comp of the way I use compression. Now when I hear other guys do it, the masters, I'm, I'm envious, but I don't feel like you have to use it. Another thing I get asked is, do I put equalizers before the compressors or after? Well, let's think about this. What What is an equalizer doing? It can either remove a frequency or add a frequency. So what is happening to the compressor if we've got like um, a lot of low frequency in, in our sound and we don't want that low frequency to be controlling the compressor as much, well we roll that out. So whatever you want to have feeding the compressor and have the compressor act on, you either add or remove and then uh, I find more often than not I put my equalizers after the compressor. But I'll do both a lot of times. A little bit of repair work in front of the compressor, a little bit of gaining back. If I lost some low end, I'll, 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 I'll gain it back after the compressor. You, you guys have seen my parallel chain on the kick drum and the snare. I, I, I sometimes add 10, 15 dB of, of, of 30, 40, 60 after the compressor, and I'm compressing a lot. Like, I'll, I'll be knocking off 12 dB, so I'm losing a lot of low end. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you this vocal uh, because I think it, 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 it illustrates a lot, of, a lot of things, and I'm going to use some compressors that we all use. I'm going to use Renaissance uh, by Waves because it's pretty popular. Uh, everybody has it. You know, it's a desert island compressor. You know, it's one of those things. If you had one compressor on a desert island, it would be that one. Um, in the plug-in world. Okay, here's the vocal.
I'll be your strength. I'll be, I'll be your strength. Okay, you hear your and strength kind of jump up. I'll be is kind of down a little bit. Now, if this was him and an acoustic guitar, I probably wouldn't change too much of that, but he's going to be competing with a lot of stuff in the track. So let's see if we can bring the I'll be up and the your strength down. I'll be your strength. I'll be, I'll be your strength. I'll be, I'll be your strength. I'll be, I'll. Now, I'm sure you heard that. It's, this is pretty dramatic. Um, now, remember our little example about the mountain top and the valleys. We took and we lowered the mountain top. Then we put the mountaintop back where it was, but as we brought it up, we brought the valley up. So we, we kind of kept your strength about normal, and we brought up the I'll be. Okay, now let's try what happens with a, uh, doing the same thing, but with more of a limiting. So essentially the same thing. This is, this is the, the rap squash preset. This preset right here. Is, I use this on everything all the time. Okay, here's with it. I'll be your strength. I'll be, I'll be your strength. I'll be, I'll be your strength. I'll be, I'll be. We actually get a little tiny bit of low end from that, and and and. Gosh, I don't know which one I like best. I I think I like. If I wanted the vocal to stay constantly in my face, I'd use this version of, uh, I, would, I would use a, a higher ratio and go more towards limiting. If I wanted the vocal to still have a little emotion and, and, and have a couple of words that were ducking down a little bit and a couple of words that weren't, I'd use, um, I'd use the other compressor. Now, an, an alternate thing is, is, um, is to use the, the other compressor and uh, use an old buddy of mine, vocal writer. Watch this. I'll be your strength. I'll be, I'll be your strength. I'll be, I'll be your. So there's other techniques too. This is kind of compression, but instead of doing it with electronics detecting the signal and processing that, it's it's actually writing levels in a different way. Real cool plug-in. Okay, now uh, I want you to hear this. Um, this is the Shadow Hills compressor. This is an analog compressor. Um, and um, now this this gives us a little color, gives us compression. It kind of, it, it's kind of a, it does it does everything. It does the, it adds an effect and it adds compression. And this is this has become one of my favorite compressors. Be, I'll be your strength. I'll be I'll be your strength. I'll be I'll now. be your strength. I'll be I'll be it. your strength. I'll be, I'll be your strength. I'll be. So that's another option. Incredible. I got, the, I got the threshold set a little low on that, but you can get the idea. Okay. Um, now let's go to let's go to an acoustic guitar. Now this is another way to compress. Now everything that we did on that vocal applies applies to the acoustic. Now this guitar, as you can tell, is pretty compressed. So what I'm doing is I'm using uh, this uh, UAD and I'm getting my compression right here. Watch this little light. Well, let me play it for you without it. As you can see, we don't really need to compress that, but we're going to compress it. We're going to mess with the attack. So that's what we're trying to mess with. And we're going to do it not just with compression, but I, I, I've added some widening and some top end, but you'll see how it all works together. my compression without it. Okay guys, so 
Uh, we're going to come back to this subject in the future because uh, we keep getting a lot of questions about this. Compression seems to be the one consistent question we get. Now, I didn't go into stereo bus because we've covered you know, stereo bus compression and how to listen for it and all that. We, we've covered that several times already. So um, just, just, uh, just to reiterate, when you sit down, have a reason to, to pull up a compressor and then, and then try and listen in your head and picture what you want it to do and then go try to achieve that sound. It might take you 30 minutes the first time and then after four or five years it'll take you three seconds because you'll already have that in your brain. By the way, guys, I don't know if you ever saw, but um, National Geographic Channel had a show on the brain. It's called Brain Games. If you ever get a chance to watch those, uh, there's a lot that can be applied to the world of audio in those. Okay, guys, I'll see you in a little bit.